Hello, it's Miss Quids again. In this video, in the LaTeX tutorial series, I shall be going over tables, in particular the tabular and table environments. There are many different environments for making tables in LaTeX, and I'm just going to focus on the ones and the particular features that I have found most useful in my time using LaTeX. The tabular environment, which is the most basic one, just begins and ends with the tabular environment, just like we did with document environments and also enumerate and itemize for lists in the last episode. So I'll just begin a tabular environment here. And when you begin the tabular environment, you need to specify the number of columns that you want and how they are going to be aligned. So let's just showcase all of the different types of alignments at once. So there's L for left, C for center, and R for right aligned. So let's have three columns, one left, one center, one right, just to show what it all looks like. And now I have a left, a center, and a right aligned column. And we specify all of this within these curly braces. So what this actually means is we don't currently have any vertical lines. And we'll see this when we actually compile the tech. So I'm going to just do a basic table here and then I'll explain what it all means. So what I've done here is I've got three rows in this table and the way that you divide each row into columns is using the ampersand symbol. So in the first column, in the first row, we're going to have column one. In the second column, in the first row, it's column two. And then in the third column, in the first row, it's co it says column three. And then at the end of each row, we put double backslash and that gives us a new row. So let's compile this and see what this looks like. And here's what the table looks like. So we have three columns and three rows. The first column is left aligned, the second is center aligned, and the third is right aligned, which you can see. Now note that this table hasn't actually got any lines dividing at all. So let's go back to the tech and I'll explain how we can do this. So if we want to have lines dividing the columns, we need to amend this table specification right here. So imagine that we wanted lines between all of the columns and also a line at the left and at the right of the table. So what we need to do is put a pipe symbol wherever we want a vertical line. So I've put a pipe in between the different columns and the left and right. When we compile this, we end up with the lines dividing the different columns. So how do we put the lines in between the different rows? And what we do is wherever we want a horizontal line, we put backslash H line like so. So now I've put H line in between the different rows and here is what we get we get dividers between the different rows. And what we'll do next is we'll just put the column headers into bold to distinguish them as column headers. And we can use the text BF command that we used in the previous episode. So I've just wrapped the headers into in the bold command. And I went over this in the last video and it's made the column headers bold. Now this is quite a small table. What would happen if we put a lot of text in one of the columns? So now in the first column in the second row, I have put a long bit of text here. And when we compile this, it doesn't actually fit. So all it's done is it's gone off the page. And so how do we wrap this? Because LaTeX obviously doesn't wrap it by default. Well, what we need to do is we actually need to change the type of column. So here we have a left aligned column. And in order to wrap it, what we need to do is change this to a paragraph type column. And to do so, we use P and then the width of the column that we want. So for example, if we use P and then five centimeters, then the result is, the result is this. So we get a column that is five centimeters wide and it's wrapped the text in order to fit in that width column. Now I specified the column width in centimeters. It can also be specified in points or in ways relative to the width of the whole page, which I won't cover in this lesson. And what if we want to force the new line at a particular point? So if we wanted to have a new line after here is for whatever reason, then we would use backslash new line. And that gives us a new line. It breaks the paragraph here. 
And if we wanted the horizontal line to only stretch across particular columns, then we would do this. We do backslash C line, and then in the curly braces, we put the first and last index of the columns that we wish the line to span over. And as you can see, the line only spans over columns one to two at this point. And now I shall quickly go over the table environment. So the table environment wraps around the tabular environment and allows the table to float on the page. So I haven't really talked about floats until this point, but basically when you use tabular, the table is going to appear wherever you put the table. Whereas if you wrap tabular within table, the table can float on the page according to the content that is around that table. So I've basically just put begin and end table commands around tabular. And when we compile this, as you can see, the table has moved down the page. Now it makes more sense to use table when you have a lot of content and you don't mind so much where the table will end up. And also it's quite helpful when you actually are using things like references. For example, if you have some text that says see table X and then, and then you have a reference to that particular table. I will talk about references in more detail in a later video, but for now I will show you how to use table to add a caption and a label. And then I'm going to link that label to the text and I'll explain that what that means when we get to it. Tabular keeps the actual content of the table and the table environment lets you add extra information and do a bit more. So first let's add a caption and I've added the caption below. That gives us a nice little caption underneath the table. And as you can see, it has numbered the table, table one. And now I will add some text referring to a table and I'll show you how we can link it so that the reference shows table one. Now, the easiest thing you might think is to write some text and then say to see table one, because we know that this is going to be table one. But what if in the future you have multiple tables and you might move them around and you don't know how the tables are going to be numbered in the end until you actually compile. So keeping track of all your tables might be a bit more work. So rather than just putting the number in the text and hard coding it this way, what we can do is give this table a label and reference that label in the text. Now I've given the table the label basic table and here is how we're going to refer to this particular table in the text. So I've put C table backslash ref and the label I gave the table and when we compile this what we get is that LaTeX has put the reference to the table number in the correct place. So if you have multiple tables or figures, then you can refer to whatever number the table or figure is. So that's it for basic tables. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all later.